Welcome. So happy to um, be painting for you today, the last day of 2020. <laughs> so um, thanks for joining for this last holiday edition that we're going to be doing. Um, so I've got my uh, Gumby colors on and my corsage, the last opportunity to do holiday ensemble. So it's pretty fun. Um, the um, it's really just kept me sane and um, I just am so grateful that I get to wake up every day and I know that I'm going to be making art and working with great people. Um, it's just, um, I really truly look forward to getting up in the morning and creating art and creating lessons for everyone. So it's what a, what a amazing, huge blessing it is. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what's up in the studio because we've been really hard at work this week even though through the holidays and everything we've been really digging into the monthly lessons um, monthly pastel painting lessons online we're doing some really kind of fun and different stuff for year three so uh, yesterday we filmed a lesson that was really um, a lot of mixed media involved it's something that I haven't done as much up to this point. So um, year three is just going to be really fun and exciting. So if you're not a member already of monthly pastel painting lessons online, head over to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and you'll find them there. You'll check it out. So, so far, the monthly lessons, there are 25 sessions, hundreds of hours of video, thousands of pages of the study PDF. Monthly lessons also includes the uh, a super stream that I do every month for the monthly people, which is a, a lesson that goes above and beyond what I do here and the free live streams. And we're also doing Marla's monthly mileage training, which is little exercises and warm ups for you to just really stay engaged and, and just always be working on your technique and skills in pastel painting, so definitely check it out. Um, visit the website today, because kind of, kind of secretly on the on the down low, the workshops are still on sale, but that's going to change tomorrow, and the prices are going to go back up to regular prices. So make sure you check it out. Um, in addition to the monthly lessons, which is more like a subscription, like a gym membership, there are also standalone workshops in watercolor, acrylics, oils, and pastels that are there for you. And once you purchase those, you have access, lifetime access to those. So a little bit, two different kinds of um, orientations there. So um, I just have lots of plans for 2021 to keep making workshops and adding to the monthly lessons for you guys. Again, I just want to build that beautiful forest of art, and I hope you'll join me. I feel so lucky. So um, yeah, just jump over the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and check it out. OK, um, so today we're going to do some more uh, audience participation. And um, then I'm going to do my demo. Then we'll have gift giving again. It's been really, really fun, and I'm really um, happy to be able to do that. So I've got a few kind of fun questions. and the a few little art questions for you today. So let's just jump in with that and hope everyone's having a great week and hope you have some nice plans, not too crazy plans for tonight and just to uh, ring in 2021. It'll be kind of a relief, I think, for everyone. Okay, so first question is, do I know the names or numbers of the pastels that I'm typically using? So, so if Kevin, Kevin, so I'm just waiting for Kevin to relay some answers to me from the chat. Um, no, the answer is no. I see a lot of no's coming in. Nope, not usually, no. Nope. Nope. Only a select few. Yep, that's right. That's right. So along those lines, I have decided to uh, not engage in a memory game <laughs> of learning what all the pastels, uh, what the color names are. 
What I do know is when I pick one up, I know, oh, this is a Terry Ludwig, and it's going to lay down uh, in a particular manner, uh, or, and this is a new pastel. So I kind of know what, what they are, but I don't know the color names. And the way I keep track is I have purchased uh, handmade charts of the major brands that I use. So if I do need to reorder a specific pastel, I can do it. And you can make your own charts, of course, but you can also buy the handmade charts from Dakota Pastels. There might be even some other places that, that make them. The, the good thing about that is that they are an actual swatch with an actual real pastel. They come with a piece of glassine over them, which is you know, completely different than referring to a printed chart, which is never going to be accurate. So that's kind of what, what I do. You can also buy from Dakota Pastels. They have these uh, pieces of, of pastel paper that um, you can, so you can make your own chart. So it's got like a little template and you can make your own chart. So that's a little bit less expensive way to handle it in that same way. Really quick, okay. Marla, this is a little bit of an aside, but yeah, can, yeah. can we cut to full screen camera one? And can you just talk about how you organize your pastels a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. What? Oh, we'll, just, we'll just continue with the, with the, uh, okay. with the questions. Okay. Nope. So you just can, uh, we'll, okay. we'll continue with the questions. Okay, 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 all right, I guess. All right, next question. Why should we do an underpainting? What would be the reason to do that? I'm not sure. So Kevin has to relay the answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, here we go. So Why are these two with the value of roadmap? Perspective, contrast, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, unity, the whole, unify the whole. Yeah, that's right. Gets rid of white. Yeah, it definitely does that. Harmony. Yeah. Roadmap of painting. So all those things. So for me, doing an underpainting does so it does so much work for me. I mean, obviously, I don't always do it. And when you guys see me do the live streams, I typically don't do them for the live streams because they take more time and they have to dry and, and usually in some way. So um, I, you, you probably don't you don't see me doing an underpainting as much as I probably do, you know, on the whole. Um, but I do find them super, super valuable. Yes, they promote color harmony, the little bits of color um, c popping throughout your piece. They, um, they can build that foundation. You can use them as a, you know, the structure of your painting, especially if you're doing a more realistic or something really complex like, a, like an interior scene or a cityscape. They can be really valuable to kind of get you going. Also, you can approach them in a more spontaneous way, like just put down color and um, use it as something that's you know much more spontaneous that you can respond to during the painting. So I, I find them really, really valuable. One of the things that I like to do in the studio is I will come out here, say, in an evening, and I'll start two or three or four underpaintings, and I'll just you know get them in you know, do one, you know, take down the painting, do another one. And that way, when I come back in to the studio for a painting session, I've already got things to start. Because obviously, to me, the, the, the hardest part of painting is starting, just getting over the hump of that empty white page. So underpainting just, like, takes care of that right off the bat. So I could have a stack of, of pieces ready to go, and I could have an easier way, an easier path into a final painting. OK, next question. Why is copying a good way to learn? It's an interesting question. 
I think. We have some answers rolling in pretty okay. soon. Uh, we have Good learning time. to see. Yeah. Um, learning to see differently than you might. I don't know why computing is good. Oh, I think we're going to get the answer pretty soon. <laughs> right, it trains your eye. It trains your eye. Teaches you to see. Yeah. Uh, teaches you to evaluate colors and values. Yeah. Um, comes to discipline. Yeah. Try new techniques. Yeah. Uh, composition play. Mm -hmm. uh, the problems are already solved. That's a really yeah. good answer. The problems are already solved. And hopefully you can kind of see a pathway to how they were solved, why they were solved the way they were. That's one thing. Um, it's a time-honored way to learn art, if you think about it. Um, artists from, you know, the, the Greeks, on, you know, on, that's that way, the way they learned and um, worked as, um, as um, uh, with with great masters from you know way back way back when so i think that um in my approach in having people do my lessons and copy is is that that the, those copies are really a foundation and meant to be a jumping point for your own individual painting practice a place to to, to start from but they're going to kind of if you're copying along and following along especially with the videos the video really it takes it to a different level because you can you can copy you can stop the video you can watch the video all the way through and then paint it on your own you can you can paint while the video is playing and stop it whenever you need to do it there's many ways of going about it but primarily it's going to force you to do things a little bit differently maybe speed up um, again, a, a lot of the problems are solved. So there's so much good about doing, um, making copies. When I was young, uh, that I just remember so many of the art books that I have. I basically copied everything in them. And that mileage um, has really, really served me well over the years. So I think that's the other thing, just pure mileage. Okay, now here's a little bit more silly question. Some of you may have seen my little Christmas tree over here. Um, how many birds do you think are on my Christmas tree this year? <laughs> and, yeah, there's a bunch. That's a hint. There's a lot of different ones. We have a couple of guesses here, 25. Yeah. No, not that many. Four. No. Not Three. more than that. More than four. Seven. Seven. Seven mm -hmm. is the correct answer. There's an owl. There's a couple hummingbirds. There's yeah. There's seven birds on that tree. On that little tree, there's seven ornaments that are birds. That's pretty cool. Okay. Next question. Why don't I start with the darkest dark and the lightest light in my pastel paintings, in particular, which is a kind of a very typical way that art instruction teaches you to approach the beginning uh, part of a painting. There's, there's a couple reasons why I don't do it quite that way. We have a few answers here. Okay. Um, eats the tooth. Um, you want the mid values yeah. uh, to keep the lights bright. Yeah. Because it leaves you with nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, That's right. You need to go back to the dust. So it leaves you with nowhere to go is probably the best answer? I think so. For me, so I'm going to start with the, the major shapes. So I'm going to look at the, the major elements in my piece, the major shapes, and I'm going to establish a middle value. So say, say I've got a a dark, a light, and a middle in those major of those major shapes. So I'm going to pick the middle of the dark, the middle of the lights, the middle of the middle of those shapes, and try to get that those established, those values established, so that I still have a, I can go a little bit darker, and I can go a little bit lighter. 
And again, the, the answer that not to fill the tooth is part of the thinking there because I want to have, uh, again, a place to go. If I go full bore dark, full bore light, then I, I um, kind of can get stuck. So I want to make sure that I, um, I have room to, to wiggle on either end of the value scale, if that makes sense. OK, next question. What's the most effective way to blend with pastels? And do I ever use my fingers? <laughs> so we have a, a, a to layer uh, fingers, yeah. yes, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Layer. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting for an answer that will give it to me. Brush. Mm, I don't use. I don't. I don't really use tools to blend. Um, sometimes I don't. I also never have a never. <laughs> I have rules of thumb, but not rules. How about crosshatch? Crosshatching. So crosshatching and layering are, are sort of part and parcel that I'm, I'm using one, putting one layer down and then usually bringing another layer over the top. So I'm getting a, this kind of um, tracery or weaving of the colors together. A couple of things that that does, it promotes some more of an optical mixing and a broken or fractured color. Also, when if you use your finger and you press the pastel into the paper, you're doing a couple of things. You're adding the oil of your fingers into the pastels, which is um, kind of has a deadening, you know, effect. The thing that's amazing about pastels is these little bits, these little particles, little uh, fragments, um, and facets are actually sitting up there on the surface of the paper and catching light. That's what makes them so luminous and so amazing and so vibrant after years and years. So if you're pressing into that and you know rubbing that mechanically down, you're 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 diminishing that effect. And so therefore I'm I'm minimizing that. So I may, you know, hit the edge of something and soften it with my finger. But I'm not rubbing. I hardly ever see me doing a rub, rub, rub with my fingers or any kind of tool. And that's why, because I want to really make sure that the pastels remain vibrant and luminous and the light can hit those little, those little pieces, those little fragments. OK, next well, question. Really quick, we had quite a few people come to answer um, uh -huh. optical mixing, optical blending. Yep, or, uh, yep. Great. Yep. Cool. All right. Good students, A students. OK, so how do I sign my name? This is sort of a complicated question in a way. There's a couple of uh, facets to that. Is do, you know, functionally, what, it, what does it say? And then also, what do I use to sign? You write Vegetta with a sharpened new pastel. That's right. That's what I do. And uh, over time, my signature has evolved and become more of a mark. It's not how I sign my checks. It's not my legal signature, in other words. Um, a lot of pastelists or and oil painters do this too. Um, they'll sign, um, like I could sign with you know, PSA and PSO and you know, I, I have like little uh, letters after my name if I wanted to. And I have chosen not to do that. And a couple of reasons for that is, um, well, there's, there's a lot of reasons for it. But the, the main reason is it doesn't look that good. <laughs> and I want my signature to, um, I don't want it to be super obvious. I want it to be um, obvious that it's there, but not detracting from the piece. I want it to be. I want to. I want it to um, be sort of legible, but not, not again, not obvious. So you know, there's a there's a little dance there to, to come up with that. 
Um, I do see students quite a lot that haven't spent very much time considering with a signature consideration. And I think it is important to do and think about what, what you're signing with, how, how large you're signing. So for instance, I'm going to try to sign my name a different scale on a big, you know, six foot painting than I am obviously on a small piece, a small pastel. So just learning what's going to be the right scale so you can still, you can see it, but not, again, not detract. Um, and depending on your, your um, you know, how legible and how, how good your handwriting is, I would keep working on it because I do see some students, you know, just, they just haven't, just spent a little time with it. I think it is important. Okay. Um, next question. Or did they have answers? Oh, they, oh, they, oh, got they the right, were they got all the right. pretty much correct answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Okay, next question. Do I frame my own pieces, own pastels? Oh, really quick, Marla, yeah. to mention about the um, signing. You don't put the year or the date on your pieces. I do not put the year or the date on my paintings because if you do that, then you have just dated your piece. Now, another one way to sort of get a, around that a little bit is to sign in addition to signing the front of a painting, to also sign the back. And there's an opportunity to put other information like the title, the, um, the date, if you have an inventory number, per se, um, um, things like that. To me, that should be relegated to the back side of the painting. And okay. to go back to answer the other question about you framing your, yeah. your pieces, yeah, framing. the answer is no. No, I don't do it anymore. Uh, I used to. I used to frame my own pastels and just found, uh, especially when I. There were a number of years when I was really active in doing lots of galleries and art, the fine art festivals all around the country. Uh, so just to save um, a lot to save time because I was working tight deadlines. I would have some of the framing done, like I'd have the mats cut, but I would fit the artwork into the frames, still a big job because they, they, you have to do it really carefully so that the dust doesn't get on the mats and so on. But now nowadays I pretty much sell, um, primarily when it comes to pastels, small unframed pieces. And when I do have something larger that I need framed, I take it to um, a great framer here in town that I've worked with a number of years. But they... There's definitely some challenges with framing pastels that um, isn't the case with oils and acrylics and some other media. So it's a little little tricky. Yep. Okay. So this is a question that came up on the uh, the Facebook page, and this, it's a silly question. How do I like my eggs? Well, while we're waiting for the answers to roll in on that very important yeah. question. Yeah, very um, important. It's very you, important. You are on Instagram, correct? I am on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm not um, I'm not as active as I, you know, like I don't post every day, but I do put stuff on Instagram. A lot of times on my Instagram page, I'll just put fun stuff that strikes me as beautiful. I haven't really tapped into doing Instagram Live or doing a lot of things because, you know, there's just too much. There's just too much to do between Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. It's but if someone wanted crazy. to find you, they could just put in Marla Baguette. Yeah, they, yeah, they could. Instagram. Yeah, you could find me on Instagram. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. there's a few people who chimed yeah. in with scrambled eggs, mm -hmm. and that's correct. Yeah, scrambled. Uh, poached but... over easy, soft boiled, wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah, I like that. But so I scramble my eggs in a little teeny bit of butter, and then I put the the egg in the pan, and I push it, keep pushing, you can't stop pushing, and then at the end, um, I, I like them dry, not wet, and then a little bit of Parmesan and ground pepper at the end, that's it, perfect, that's how I like my eggs. All right, final question, that's silly, final question is, what workshop are we working on for 2021? So last week we asked what are we working on for monthly but this is workshop what are we doing anybody know <laughs> I can't 
She's rolling in. Yeah, Let's see. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Drawing. Yep. Sunsets. Color College yeah. 2. Yeah. Hey, how do you guys know? Um, let's see. Uh, what else? Um, a few more. Nocturne. Portraits. Composition. Oceans. Watercolor. It would be nice to get back into watercolor this yeah, year. Yeah, I want to do watercolor again. Um, so, yes, definitely, definitely drawing. Hopefully portraits. That's kind of a big thing to bite off. We're definitely going to have a portrait month in monthly. Um, Color College 2 for sure. I want to do fairy gardens in watercolor. That's what I think we should do for the summer or spring. I think that would be super fun and get some younger grandkids and kids involved. And I think that would be super fun. Um, yeah. So lots of we have lots of really fun plans for 2021. I'm really excited about it. So hopefully it'll be a really great year for everyone okay so all right i think we're on to cool. painting uh, head over to the um painting that the uh demo for today i wanted to say so three. this this um this um particular reference is is the the photo that you see is the reason it has that sort of patina is because it is a, a vintage <laughs> it's an old school photo and i have painted this before a number of years ago, I painted the, this scene. So I feel like I'll be able to manage it pretty well today. Um, um, but I like it. I just love the, that, the contrast of that blue with the gold, the gold foliage, the, the, those grasses. I think it's really cool. One thing I'm looking at on my, um, did you go to the yeah, easel? I'm also going to take this corsage off because I know I'm going to be um, my last opportunity to wear a corsage, but I think I'm going to be hitting it. Okay. There we go, right there. Okay. Um, one thing I want to point out about the this scene is um, the sky here, the sky color. So you can see I've got kind of pink here, and the sky in the photo is almost white or yellow. And I think this pink worked out really well in the painting because I, I kind of echoed it over here in the grass. Uh, and so I think that that worked out really well. Now this painting looks to me like it was on, painted originally on um, the burgundy color fix paper. So this is a little bit different. Now I chose this paper today. This is pastel matte, uh, primarily because you guys, I'm running out of paper. And this is what I had. And I think that's going to work out just fine. Um, so that's so not, not too much more to it than that. So um, I'm going to come up. The first thing I want to come up with is where my horizon is on this, um, and it's up high, which is kind of cool. And so I'm going to come over here and look at the stick with looking at the photo. One thing that can be um, kind of confusing if you've got more than one kind of reference, it can be a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to try to stay with the photo. Also, staying with the photo will keep me from, you know, I don't want to totally do exactly what I did the last time. And um, just to um, mention to everybody, um, if your video is a little out of focus, just check your resolution down to, there's a little cog, and it's the settings cog, and you can click on that. And if you, if you choose um, 1080p HD, it should be nice and clear, or try refreshing, refreshing, refreshing your browser. Yeah. We should be coming at you with a plenty of plenty, plenty of good video. Now this is really interesting because some of this foliage is in shadow and some of it's in the light. I think that that's what's so attractive to me about it. These little 
patterns of light and shadow. The shadow back in here behind this kind of silhouetting and then it kind of comes forward here. Clusters. And there's a little mountain shape back in here. That's really nice. And some dark. And there's water here. So this the shape of this these grasses and kind of comes forward. And then there's this tangle of stuff right here. So I always love to paint this kind of thing. And then interesting about this is that there are these uh, cast shadows in the water. And cast shadows and reflections both. So that's kind of fun to try to, to get. These reflections and the cast shadows. And uh, here's a little uh, comment on your style and, and your practice as a pastelist. You do not make your own paper and you do, you do not make your own pastels. No, I don't. And uh, But you don't have anything against that. You just don't have No, time. I don't have anything. Oh, not at all. I mean, if you've got the the energy and the, the time to do that, I just you know, and I have done that. I have made pastels. I have made my own surfaces. Definitely tried that out. Um, you know, some pastelists, their 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 style like is really like um, dependent on um, making their own own stuff. I just at one point or another said, "Gosh, you know, there's so many great papers on the market. There's so many um, uh, that I don't that I'm not going to do that." that I made the conscious choice that um, instead I would um, focus on using that time, that which, because it takes a lot of time to do that, to make your own. I would focus on painting, and that was just something that was important to me. So, okay. So that's, that's kind of my, my sketch. This is water, the foliage masses, the distant hillsides, the distant trees, sky. So that's what we've got. Pretty good start. I like it. All right, so now the, the thing that I, I want to get in here as quickly as I can to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to pick a few things. To get that rolling. So I'm just going to come in here with something for these grasses. See, I love this, these kind of colors. Soft. Another quick question. Uh, do you ever use color fix? Yeah, I, Color Fix was a paper that um, for a number of years I was really pretty much devoted to Color Fix. Um, but then I, you know, I just kind of go on a, a, a bender sort of a, with different papers. So now I'm just such a big fan of the um, this pastel mat. I used, I used some Color Fix last week, actually, in the lesson. And um, about the reference photo, um, it, there's a hard turn in the river in the foreground. Um, is that an optical illusion, or is that? This right here? Yeah. Um, 
I think, I don't know if it's a turn. It, what it is is this, this little area, there's water over here also. This is sort of a, an area that there, there's grasses in the water. This, this is water also. I'm not, I'm not going to end my painting like that. I'm going to let it come like this. I don't want this goat to go like that so much. So you'll, you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it forward. But I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that turn. And those are two, that's kind of a fork and river. That's not a road in the background, correct? That's another river back there. I don't know where, so where back a, there is. Like right in the middle there, there looks like it's a, looks like it's a forked river. There's no road in this picture, correct? There's no road. Yeah, there's no road. And to me, it doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> it doesn't matter that if what the what the river is doing in the photo. It only matters how I'm putting the elements together. So in other words, when I'm painting, I'm not painting a river or a road or a or a face or a anything. I'm just painting shapes that are a particular size in relationship to other shapes and they're a particular color and in relationship to other colors and that's it. And I just wanted to mention of course thank you for the um, people who donate to the lot to the super chat. Is it oh, called the super chat? Super what? chat. Super yeah, chat. thank you so much. Yeah, it's very it keeps sweet. A, it's very sweet and keeps us, it helps us, every little bit helps us out. Let's just bring um, more, more lessons, more value to what we're doing. Yeah, there's a few people who, who are usual suspects and we, we really appreciate it. Yeah, we thing. really, really, we, 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 we know who you are. Thank you. So I'm not just now kind of getting some of these darks in. Oops. And before I go too much further, I need to get um I need to get some of the sky in, but I want, I'm thinking about some colors like this. So here's a good question. Um, I've heard you, I've heard Marla say, do not quote, do not make it up, but she edits the composition. Can Marla explain the difference between not making it up and editing the composition? Yeah. So editing means, editing means taking something away, scooching it around, Okay, yeah, um, it, yeah, but, yeah, so to me there's a big difference between editing and making up. So making up would be, oh, I'm going to put a, a wheelbarrow in my painting, but I don't have a picture of a wheelbarrow, and even if I did, it's not in the same perspective or it's not, um, um, or it's different, got different lighting, all of that. So, you know, when I worked as an illustrator many, many years, it was pre-internet, so we would have to take various pieces of photo reference and put them together to make a painting. And, you know, that's hard. You have to be really good at it. You have to get the perspective and the lighting and the scale and everything. So on the whole, Unless you're really, really confident, I don't do that kind of thing. So if there's, you know, I don't put a house where there's not a house. Now I might, if there's a house, I might scooch the house over a little bit or make it so it's not tangent to the top of the mountain or something like that. But that's what I'm talking about, not making stuff up. 
is really different from editing. All right, if that, if that makes sense. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get some gusto in here with some blue. But that's just your way of working. Like if somebody wants to put a UFO in the painting or something. They're hey, go for it. I'm, I'm just saying from my perspective, um, it's, it's difficult. That that, that's, a, that's a tricky and difficult thing to do. But yeah, if you, you know, if you feel good about it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm only, you know, the only thing I can do is tell you what I do. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what I do and, and passing that along. You know, that, that's it. Because there are all kinds of artists that do, you know, all kinds of things, and far be it from me to. Okay, I want to get. This is the reflection. Darker. Getting some. So here's a question. Um, yes. Says, how does Marla approach a bigger project? For instance, a mountain. I think they mean a bigger subject within the piece. Since so big, would you go value value at a time? So a large, say a large mountain in the in the piece. How yes. do you approach that big? So thing? any any element in a painting, I'm going to try to establish. The, the elements in the, in the painting as quickly as I can. So uh, usually when I'm painting, I'm thinking about what's the biggest, easiest thing to get in there, right? What, what, what feels like it's the biggest, easiest element to establish? And I really want to, to, to do that as quickly as I can in a, in a painting. This is this this is the water that's in shadow over here. Some rock. And there's also some some bit of reflection in here too. Kind of cool. Look at what I did a little bit. Okay, this is coming together nice, nicely. Um, so really quick, Marla, I moved the camera a little bit, um, but we always have a balancing act with trying not to force the perspective on the piece too much. Yeah. So, um, you know, just be patient with us. We'll try to, sometimes if I tell Marla to not stand in front of the painting, that's the only time she really gives me a, a death glare. Yeah. I so I have, to, I have to be careful. I think, <laughs> True, because I do, there are times, you guys, that I have to stand in front, because I just can't do it, so I try, I really try not to, because doing this, the way I'm painting is actually very unnatural, and I'm doing it this way for you, but it is not a natural way to go about doing a painting, so I do my best to stay out of the way so you can see, and also... Yeah, try not to di direct us because we're doing, we're, we do, we, we are aware of 
what's going on and we we do our best so try not try just to be patient but also i think it's important to, to point out that when they're painting on their own that you could move around all over the place and you might have to yeah yeah you might have to right? you get a different look from here or there yeah. step back a little bit all that yeah. stuff oops okay i think this is looking kind of good and now i want to get some of this distance in here. Um, let me go ahead and get this water in here a little bit, a little bit lighter in value. Here's a um, question. Um, do you enter shows? Um, you mean like pastel society shows? I here's my thing with that. I I do occasionally. Um, I try to enter mostly the the national shows when I then I if I'm gonna do it. Um, I um, I enter uh, the pastel journal. Um, 100, I'm going to be in there with a couple of pieces this year, which is really nice. Um, uh, I have done a whole bunch of juring of shows. And so my a little bit of a thing that I have about that uh, is that um, uh, once I've been the juror for a show, it doesn't feel very fair or right for me in a certain way to then enter that show. So I'm I'm careful about that. I just I want to give people a chance, you know. And I'm not saying I'm going to win everything, but it just seems like once you've once you've um, juried it or you won a big prize, you know, why why do you need to keep you know, entering all the shows. So I'm, I'm just kind of thoughtful and careful about it. And I just want to be, you know, yeah, that's my thing. I'm just trying to get a little shape here. This is looking really fun and nice. Also, when do you sleep? That's a good question. Oh, I don't sleep very much. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I work hard, but that's good, you know. What what else am I gonna do? I and I love what I do. So, gosh darn it, that's pretty neat. Uh, that's a lucky thing. So I should work hard because, you know, I've been given the opportunity to, to, to do this. Um, okay, so I need to get the rest in because it's, I think once I get this up here, it's gonna fall together really nice. And then we'll do prizes. So I'm gonna come in with something really light right here on this little edge of this bank. And then well, here's an interesting yeah. question. Okay. Maybe maybe this question could be the new what's your favorite music question. Like we won't answer it for several months. Okay, what's that? Uh, what is your astrological sign? Oh. So we'll just string people along for a couple months and they can. Should we? Well, there's only twelve twelve answers, so. Yeah, yeah there's only twelve answers. And it's. Well, you know, I have a birthday coming up. That ought to help. Ah, good clue. Ugh. <laughs> 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 Also, did you mention where this photo was taken? 
This photo was taken years and years ago, and it is um, in um, Yellowstone. No. Okay, now I'm going to get this um, background, the sky in. Funny enough, I, I usually get the sky in sooner, but I didn't today. I think I'm having too much fun with this. This is totally my, my cup of tea right here. Definitely my uh, kind of my jam. Okay, so I'm going to get the this this background shape in, and um, then the sky. Oh my, I didn't, I didn't. Um, So this is I'm, this wants to be pretty light in value. This this is the distant hillside. And can you also remind us what size this painting is? This is eleven by eleven. All ready to go and to be shipped. Someone's gonna win this today. And why do you hold your reference photo in your hand so often? It's just habit. It's just, you know, habit from old, just painting so much old school photographs. Also, I have terrible vision, terrible, terrible vision. That's very unusual. So I, that probably has to do with it partly. Um, I'm looking for my pink for the sky. Mm, I want something in between there, maybe this one. Maybe. No, a little more. Mm. Maybe this. Here's a, I'm going to combine a couple of questions. Okay. Um, do you ever do large pastels? And um, what's the largest pastel you've ever done? I, I, these days, I have done a lot of large pastels, really big ones. You know, like I had a commission for Kaiser Hospital that was, boy, it was like, I don't know, eight feet or something. So, you know, we got paper on the roll. And um, so, yeah, I've done that. Um, uh, these days I don't do that because I, if I'm going to do, a, if I'm going to do something large like that, I'm going to do it in acrylic or, or oil. Um, it's just so, um, expensive, the framing and whatnot that just, and the logistics of it are kind of tricky, so... Again, just kind of a decision to uh, make my life easier, I would say. Yep. It's 
fun to do big stuff like that, though. You know, really something else. I'm just going to get my sky in. And um, I need to darken that. Um, this needs to be a little darker. That's why you, you never know until you get something in what you have to get get it all in relationship. Okay, so that's better. Um, here's a quickie. Um, have you cleaned your pastels recently? No, I haven't cleaned them recently. Why does it look like it? Yeah, somebody no, mentioned it. Before. No, I haven't. I need to. I, I, yeah. I also, need, um, I need, um, I need to get another, I need to start another tray out in my um, other studio. That's one thing I need to do. So someone says, I'm curious about your choice of colors. Your paintings are so vibrant. Does that come from knowledge you share in Color College? I'm thinking about taking that class. Yeah, I mean, I think that my approach to, to color choices is definitely, you know, we're hitting on that in Color College. Color College is really all about um, really understanding, a thorough understanding of the three aspects of every color, value, hue, saturation. And once you have that firm, then you, you can begin to make more dynamic, bolder color choices that are not... Um, um, that you can be, you can be a lot more individual, um, and um, I, I think it's yeah. So yes, color college is about that understanding. There's going to be a color college too. Okay, so now one thing I want to do with this that's pretty important to me is. Getting um, getting a gradation in the sky. I also want a little stronger. And um, really quick, that heart shaped pastel um, is it? That's a Terry Ludwig. That's a Terry Ludwig. Terry um, sends you know. He, he just kind of randomly sends those out with um, with an order, just kind of as a nice gesture. He, yeah, really sweet. Here's a great question. Do you ever do abstract paintings in pastel? I do, and I really really like doing it. We're going to do a, a monthly of, that's ab, you know, abstract. Um, a lot of, you know, a, you know, to me, a, a lot of what I'm doing here is an abstraction. Everything starts, you know, <laughs> if, if you think about it, everything is an abstraction of, you know, the visual field. So it's kind of all, all kind of fits together. Um, I guess if, if I weren't doing, concentrating on, on lessons, I'd probably do a lot more abstract kind of work. Okay, so now I want to get a gradation up there in the sky. What? 
Oh, people are saying that there's a face in the uh, where in the lower left corner. I, I usually don't uh, entertain this because then there's it always a face. goes off into get people getting way too silly. But okay, I gotta see it. Remember we had the one with the house. Yeah, we had one with oh. the house. Where, yeah, that one. Where's the face, you guys? The face. Show me the face. Yeah. I want to see it because I don't. I, I know oh. Oh, this is the. Oh, oh I okay. see it too. Okay, oh, okay. we got to We got to get rid of that. Yeah, we got to get rid of that, man. That's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, we don't want faces. That's the. I had. Uh, when I used to do. I've, I've told this story before. I used to do festivals. And. Um, I had this new series of big, big oil paintings, and uh, oh yeah, I can't. I gotta get rid of that. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm standing there, you know, at the booth, and this little boy with his dad comes up, and the and the kid goes, "Daddy, daddy, daddy! A dra the dragon! Come see this dragon!" <laughs> no, he's pointing right at my painting. I'm like, no, there's no dragon in there, man. And of course, I had then after that, I had to go back and paint over that painting because then once you once you see that thing in there, you can't not see it. All right, I want to get I want to get some. That's so funny. That was a long time ago we had that how the house showed up. So that that's helpful this in the sky. It's really nice. All right. And then I want a little bit of softer something in here. a little more definition. Okay. A little more gradation. Okay, now the last thing here. I mean, there's a lot more that we could play with in here, like little mark making. Get So, um, oh. I want a little bit lighter blue. See if I can get the right thing. Yeah. Just pump that up a little bit. Now this kind of thing, you got to go for it a little bit. It's hard to to, to make those the, these kind of choices at the end. Like you think, oh, it looks really good. I don't want to mess it up um, to really bring it home. But I think it, it, you got to get used to doing it. Here's another question. Um, do you paint every day? I don't paint every single day, but I paint, but close, I would say close to it. Almost, there's, almost there's, every working day, 
yeah. Know, lately we've yeah, been yeah. getting we, a lot of work, work done. Yeah. And I definitely am, I make some kind of art pretty much every day. Um, I'm going to draw or paint or some, something every single day for sure. Okay, I think that's I think that's pretty much it on the on the demo. I like it. It turned out really nice. So we will show with the mat and we'll also show your stick. Okay. Just let everybody know. And then we got to do prizes. So hopefully people stuck around. I was intending to take a break in the middle, but I got so involved All right, turned out nice. Let's let's take a look at it. Not supposed to blow on it either. <laughs> I always blow this part. Let's see if I can get it over there. Yeah, there. yeah, it's fun. It's nice. I like it. I see one thing I want to do. I'm going to get in there with a little bit of blue spruce. It's a little crazy with the mark. And then maybe, maybe here, another spot like that. Just a little more texture to it. All right, guys. All right, let's take a look That's at those it. sticks. I'm going to zoom down there. Oh, I don't know. I, I kind of. I put some away, I think. I don't know, maybe I didn't. But yeah, that looks like the painting. Um, I think important was this brown right in here, up there in the water. I think that was really, really important part of the painting. And the reflection. Okay. Yep, there's some, some gold. Pink. All right, here. time to give yeah. some stuff away okay, or what? Time to give some stuff away. Yay. All right. That's good. Okay. Sorry it took me so long to get to the to the end here. But um all right, today's winners. It's so exciting. Okay, so the Terry Ludwig pastels go to drum roll, here we go, to Linda Palowski, Justine Reinerson. And Nancy DeLuca. So, an, an original painting, which um, not this demo, and I'm really sorry, but you'll be getting a nice um, piece. And I, I honestly, I haven't quite picked it out yet. I've got a couple ones in the running, and I'm not really sure what it is. Goes to Francesca Droll. Today's demo goes to Sydney Blackwell. So that's really cool. I think it turned out really nice. And free a free workshop of your choice goes to uh, Eva Gott, Peggy Van Valkenburl, Melissa Converse. And the yearly goes to... That's a one one year of the monthly pastel painting lessons online. It's a, it's a great prize. Goes to Eric Garcia. All right, you guys, that is it. And um, we'll just wait. I'll just wait a couple minutes to take any other questions that you guys might have today. Are you um, are you going to sign that painting? Is oh it yeah, done? I, I definitely do need to 
sign it. Cool. Yeah. Let's, let's uh, do that on camera here. All right. Let's see. I usually like, I mean, just if, if I can, I want to sign it over on the left only because we read um, from left to right and it just sort of makes better sense to me to have it here. In this piece, it's a little um, like this sort of makes sense. To, to It's a little more quiet. But I'm going to try to see if it'll work to do it over here. So really quick, Marla, don't block this one. Sorry. <laughs> okay. This is the moment of truth. This don't is the moment of truth. Don't block yeah. it. Yeah. Marla, yeah. stay the heck out of the scene. Is that what you're trying to say? Pretty much. Pretty much. Like, okay. Let's see. Oh, because last time did I like go like this? Oh. Here's how you sign it. Oh, <laughs> oh, boy. Is that what I did? Oh, I don't think so. Let's see. Here goes. Here goes nothing. Let's see. It's not going to do it. It doesn't dig into it enough, so i got to pick a different stick. Oh, boy. There we go. That's not right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use some. I'm going to use a, a gray. That's not right. And that's not. I'm blowing it. I'm totally blowing it. Okay. That's it. That's my signature. That is it. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I hope you have a really, really wonderful New Year's. Um, I'm looking forward to bringing live streams to you guys on a weekly basis next year, I'm hoping. And if you're a monthly subscriber, watch out in the next next week or so for your uh, monthly super stream lesson that's coming really soon. And your monthly mileage training is going to be coming out really quick as well. So look out for that. and. Um, other than that, happy, happy new year. And I am so grateful for all my viewers, students, subscribers, followers. I'm, um, it's been a, an amazing, um, interesting, crazy, unprecedented 2021. So here's to uh, 20. So here's to a better 2021. All right, you guys um, have, a, have a great weekend, New Year's, all that. Okay, see you soon.